Hey, welcome to Pie Tales. My name is Lloyd, and today we got a special guest as usual. We got the half man intangible here. Peace, peace. What's happening, y'all? That is your camera right there. Let people know who you are and what you're here today for. Today. All right, guys. Um, my name is Julian Means. I'm the creator of the Jay Majora character, AKA your average everyday intergalactic half man intangible. Um, I'm here today to speak on this project. You know, I, I just put it out um, about a couple of weeks ago, about two weeks ago. So, you know, um, this was a project that was long in the making. So I had the opportunity to talk to this gentleman here about the project for the first time, first interview as a half man intangible. So let's get it started, man. Hey man I'm <laughs> glad you came to Pie Tales to talk about your project. Absolutely. This is a message to everybody else. Whenever you have projects, ideas, business plans, we're come to this to guy first. Yes, come, come to Pie Tales. Uh, because on Pie Tales, we have dessert. Yeah, uh, man. We're here yeah, yeah. equipped um, with cookies, man. <laughs> yeah. So, honestly, my co-worker's wife made some cookies. He passed them off to me. And we're going to eat them here. So, yeah. grab whatever cookie you man. think looks good. Sounds good, man. I'm going to grab the colorful uh, one because I'm a big kid, man. <laughs> <laughs> Break it up. Take a bite. Tell the people how it is. I'm sure it's good. So it's been good. Mm. Yep. Okay, yeah. yeah. Definitely A1. Yeah, yeah. That's straight. That's really straight. good, man. <laughs> good cookies. And I got some good coffee in this Pie Tales mug. Great times. <laughs> Merch coming soon. Should be out by the time I put this, this out. Definitely get one, y'all. Yes, yes. Get you a Pie Tales mug. That's the Freddy the Pie on the front. <laughs> Great for almond milk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I kept trying to get a whole bunch of information out of him before the interview. He was just like, I'm saying too much. I, I'm, I'm going to say it all in the interview. So now is your time to all talk. Right. Who is the Half Man Intangible? What is this project? When did it start? All what right. is your goal for it? Cool, cool. So um, I'll start from the beginning of this project. Um, so this project came as... This project came um, as I was really trying to endeavor into, um, you know, fiction writing. So like comic books, superheroes, uh, things of that nature. I've, I've always had an interest in it. And then uh, I've always had an interest in it. And Just like basically writing. I would. Well, yeah, you see, I would I would basically um, I would come up with characters in my head, but I never really understood how to, you know, translate that into an actual, you know, thing, animation, yeah. comic book. You know, I'm not I'm not a drawer per se, but um you know, I would have ideas for, for characters in my mind. I would just kind of picture the events and the sequence of events and the character dynamics just kind of, you know, in my head because that's, that's all I had at the time. It was all there. So yeah. But, um, okay. yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I had been rapping, I had been rapping and, and, and recording music for a long time. I've actually been recording since 2011 um, under Jay Chris. Um, this was when I was 18. So at that point, I was really growing as an artist. Um, mm -hmm. My first couple of times recording, kind of learning the industry more excuse me <laughs> learning the industry more that's some good almond milk that's why learning the industry more um you know kind of having dynamics with certain people in the industry kind of learning about marketing promotion um you know you know, learning about how how to suffice in the industry so okay. i did that under j chris um one big one big part of this was um was i really i really wanted to focus on creating more of a comic book character or like a TV series. I just didn't understand where to start. Um, but you know, I, I've had, I've, I've rapped for a long time and then I kind of really thought about it. And then I looked at, um, one of my earlier influences from when I was a child and that's MF doom. Yes. Um, so, you know, I, I have a long history with, um, with doom and his music and his influence on my life. You know, he, I wasn't really a hip hop fan until 2005 when I was introduced to his music through the Adult Swim website, through uh, the Mouse and the Mask, his collaborative album with um, with Danger Mouse, and um, you know at that time, you know there was more of a there was more of a distinguishable line between underground and mainstream rap. Yes. A lot of a lot of the underground rap at that time was really um, prominent through the internet. Um, so that's that's how I discovered MF Doom, and then right. at that particular time, you know that's just um, you know that that was something I had never seen before. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. Doom. One time. Yeah, rest in peace, man. That that was that was terrible when I heard it, man. With you know, with the history I had with him, but um, 
you know, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I had never really looked into exactly what he was doing back then because I was like twelve, so you know, I was just, it, I was just kind of like, well, you know, this is, you know, this is a rapper, but he wears a mask and da da da, and he's got this little, he's got this little thing going on, persona going on, and you know, it was exciting at the time, but I was just getting introduced to hip hop, so I started looking at, um, you know, other artists who don't really go in the same direction that Doom did with the type of imagery or the type of. Uh, you know, the, the type of mythos he was trying to create with his music, and I became more of a, like, real real hip-hop kind of person at the time. Um, but, you know, I, I, that pretty much influenced me. I didn't start rapping until I was 18 um, under Jay Chris. I was working with... Um, my first project under Jay Chris was um, Ancient of Days. I, I was in a group with a um, longtime friend of mine, Black Abyss, a.k.a. Rashad Sabri. Shout out to him. Um... And then, yeah, man, you know, that was my start. So, you know, I evolved through that time. But, um, you know, as I got as I got older and as I started to kind of take a break from rap music and kind of focus more on, you know, school, um, you know, my family, my daughter, my children, um, my wife, um, and, you know, other, other personal matters, um, I still had this real desire. I really, I still had this real desire to really work with, um, you know, creating comic book characters and really creating a storyline and creating character dynamics, interesting characters. So uh, I looked at the Doom model closely because, like I said earlier, I didn't really understand, you know, how that how that starts. But I was like, you know, uh, I put a lot of emphasis on writing. I put a lot of emphasis on lyrics. It's like, you know, I could really develop this character and kind of create this story and I could start just from what I know best, which is which is rapping. So, um I actually began writing Half Man Intangible to a different beat than, um, you know, what was present in the final product. Um, it was actually an instrumental by a New Orleans band, uh, Mute Math. Many might be familiar, many might not, but it's a New Orleans band, uh, Mute Math. I forgot the name of the instrumental, but um, I started putting together the idea through that instrumental. Um, and at that point, I had half of the first verse done and I had part of the hook done. But that was just kind of like the the growth of the idea. So, you know, that was there, it was written. I hadn't moved forward with it until I found the current beat through uh, through Young Reverb. I actually found this beat um, just kind of searching the internet for kind of interesting sounds and seeing if they had kind of modern trap beats that kind of incorporated other genres of music that I was into. I was looking into, um, I was looking into beats that might, fuse, that might fuse certain aspects of uh, what's, was popularly known as intelligent dance music, which is, um, you know, a lot of drill and bass artists like Square Pusher, Apex Twins, for those who may or may not be familiar with those. Um, and I came across, I came across his page and, um, you know, he was a relatively, um, you know, rel relatively unknown, um, you know, as, as, as compared to other, you know, people selling beats online, you might see them with like a couple of thousand views, a hundred, couple of hundred comments. He had like a couple of hundred views and maybe like, for comments and that was attractive to me because I was really trying to put a focus on not who the person was or what their status was or how popular they were. I was really looking for more people who, you know, were more accessible to me. I really put an emphasis on, you know, me just kind of being an average person trying to do the project. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the start of it. Uh, I heard the beat and I was like, you know, what really caught my interest in the beat at first was the beginning was the, um, you know, the, the, the lack of the actual beat drop there where they had just this kind of do, 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 do in the beginning. And I was just like, you know, this is really cool. And then it's still, you know, I can catch the cadence and the metronome of it. So I'm able to, um, you know, I was like, yeah, you know, I, what I have here would really work well on, would really work well with this beat. And then I started doing the first couple of bars I had for the first verse to the, to that kind of, the, to the part, to the beginning of the, the beginning of the beat, which had, you know, no drums. It wasn't, there was no drums in it. The beat drop hadn't come in yet. And I was just like, yeah, this is what I'm going to go with. It's very modern, but it fits the concept of what I'm doing. So um, a lot of research went into this project um, because when I, um, when I created the character, when I started really developing the character, the idea I had was initially for the character to represent both me as, you know, a regular human being, somebody who goes through the same things or similar things that a lot of people go through in their lives and also the part of me that was creative the part of me that didn't have any boundaries as far as what i wanted to rap about what i wanted to do creatively that's where half man intangible really came from that's the origin of it and that's the core of it what i did with that concept was i kind of created i started from i started from there to really try to create and build um 
you know, the actual, like, what is the intangible aspect of him, right? I know as far as what I'm trying to communicate, it was, you know, me being, you know, a human being who's creative, a human being and his ideas, but I wanted to really dive into the, you know, the, the fiction aspect of it, the superhero aspect of it. So I looked to the left of me, I'm like, well, you know, I have um, Neil deGrasse Tyson books, I have Carl Sagan books, you know, so I just had to like, okay, well, you know, um, astrophysics and, you know, the gallery, the, the galaxy, that's something I'm kind of familiar with already, so that would work. So the intangible aspect became space. So the character Jay Majora is a character who finds this mask. I'll actually go back from the beginning of like the the the, the story canonically, right? So um, what I came up with is that there's a story behind the mask, right? Not just the character. The mask is about billions of years old, right? Um, the mask existed before, you know, the expansion of the universe, basically. It's a very powerful item um, that, you know, it, it, encap it encapsulates all of the aspects that you see in the galaxy. The Big Bang Theory, the cooling, uh, the expansion of the universe, um, things of that nature, you know, um, supernovas, exploding stars, you know, things of that nature. It, it encompasses everything that was that's in our galaxy. Um, so billions of years ago a conflict arose that caused the mass to create the Big Bang Theory, right? So, J. Majora comes in, you know, billions of years after the Big Bang Theory, um, or I mean, after the Big Bang um, happened, and so, um, you know, basically the mass found its way to Earth after all this, right? Because like I said, the, you know, Big Bang, Earth would have been created after, the, after that event happened, so the mask is on Earth, and then this regular guy, J. Majora, he, you know, he's you know, like like I said, he's your average everyday person, right? He's trying to maintain. He might not have the, you know, he might not have everything together, but you know, he's an adult male. He's not the smartest person in the world, but you know, he's he's trying. He makes efforts. So he finds this. He finds this mask, and of course, he doesn't know what it is. But he's looking at it because, like, okay, we well, you know this is different. So he puts the mask on, right? Because he doesn't know any better, and. You know the mat, the power, the what's in the mask is not meant to be in contact with, um, you know, car carbon-based organisms, Earthlings. So the mask ends up kind of taking not control, but it ends up changing the 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 structure of his body, the structure of his DNA, his anatomy, and so he becomes part, you know, carbon-based organism, human life form, and part ever expanding galaxy he becomes one with the um you know with the cosmos that we have above us so that's how the um that's the fictional el elements of the character that i was able to create um so of course that's still you know that's what was developed from me um trying to represent myself as you know a regular person somebody who's still human and you know somebody who's not a product somebody who's a human being i go through human stuff i'm not rich you know, I'm just a regular person. And then the part of me that's creative with no bounds. So I don't have anybody telling me what to do. I'm not limiting myself. It's just, you know, me and my creativity. So it's kind of a, kind of a complex thing. I, that, you know, if you know me well, that's kind of how I like many things. But uh, yeah, that's a basic syn synopsis and overview of kind of how the, the, the concept came to be and how the concept came to um, the point where, we are, where we're at now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I know I probably spent five hours talking. I apologize. So save my time and let okay. the, our host ask our, our questions. No, so you went through the song, the story, and the process, you know, for making both of those two. Mm -hmm. So then you have the actual video and visuals. Yeah. Okay. So I can definitely talk about that. That was no, an intro. Yeah. This is history.